Hello and welcome to another TLDR Global video. If you've been paying attention to global news, you might have heard that for a while now, tensions have been increasing between Hong Kong and China, with pro-democracy advocates taking to the streets to protest China's actions in recent years. However, in the last day or so, things have suddenly got a lot worse for Hong Kong's democracy advocates, thanks to new election laws introduced by China. So in this video, we're going to be explaining Hong Kong's new election laws, and why they might sound the death knell for Hong Kong's democracy. In the intro, I said if you've been paying attention to global news, and we get that's a hard thing to do. It's easy when there's so much happening at home to miss what's going on around the world. So TLDR Global is our channel where we highlight the big world events that you ought to know about. We even have a series called The Global Summary, where in 8 minutes I run down the biggest news stories of the week and give you article recommendations if you want further reading. Anyway, if that sounds up your street, then be sure to subscribe and hit the bell, because a bunch of you haven't made the leap just yet. Anyway, thanks so much for your support. So, we usually start these videos with a ton of context, but seeing as we did all of that in our video on Hong Kong's security laws last year, we're just going to put a link to that video in the description for anyone who wants a detailed rundown of what's going on in Hong Kong. For everyone else, after the pro-democracy protests cooled down in mid-2020, the pro-democracy groups turned their attention towards the upcoming Legislative Council of Hong Kong elections, which were scheduled for September 6th, 2020. Pro-democracy parties performed astonishingly well in the November 2019 local elections, winning 388 of the 452 available seats, up from just 124 in 2015. Anyway, they hoped that they could replicate this success in the LEGCO elections, and maybe even win a 35-plus majority. A pro-democracy majority in the LEGCO would make it a lot harder for the chief executive to pass through any pro-Beijing legislation, and would put China under massive political pressure. While this outcome would have been great for pro-democracy groups, it's worth noting that it was a bit of a long shot, and that's because of how the LEGCO elections are set up. Even with a majority of the votes, pro-democracy parties would have been unlikely to get a majority of seats. Half of LEGCO's 70 seats are elected from so-called functional constituencies, which basically represent interest groups in Hong Kong. And these functional constituencies are generally pretty pro-Beijing. In the 2016 elections, 24 of the seats went to pro-Beijing parties and 10 went to pro-democracy ones, with one going to an independent party. The remaining 35 seats are directly elected from multi-member geographic constituencies, which use the largest remainer method. We're not going to explain precisely how this works, but it's broadly proportional. For example, in the 2016 election, pro-Beijing parties won 40% of the vote and ended up with 16 seats, while the localist and pro-democracy parties won about 55% of the vote, and won the remaining 19 seats. The problem here is that even if the pro-democracy parties won a majority of the votes in the geographical constituency, and therefore more than half of the 35 seats available, this might not be enough to counteract the functional constituencies, which, as we said, lean pro-Beijing. Regardless, this was the democracy protesters' plan. Attempt to win a majority in LEGCO, and then see what happens. However, in late July 2020, two major changes happening. Firstly, 12 pro-democracy candidates, including four incumbents, were disqualified from running. Secondly, the chief executive of Hong Kong, Carrie Lam, used emergency powers to push the election back by a year, to September 5th, 2021. According to Lam, this was because of the coronavirus, but it looked like quite convenient timing for Beijing. This was when pro-democracy politicians really started getting suspicious, and their suspicions were confirmed in early March, when reports began to emerge from the two sessions that China was planning to change Hong Kong's electoral law. Two sessions refers to the annual plenary sessions of the Hong Kong People's Congress, which is the Chinese legislature, and the Chinese People's Political Consultative Conference, which is basically a group of influential businessmen and representatives. The two sessions take place at the beginning of March, and it's a big deal, because it's basically two weeks of the year when all of China's elite come together to discuss all kinds of issues. 
This Thursday, on the final day of the MPC's plenary sessions, these reports were confirmed. The MPC passed a resolution that basically said that China was going to change Hong Kong's election system to make it impossible for pro-democracy groups to win a majority. The resolution was passed with 2,895 votes for and zero votes against, and only one abstention. So, what does this new decision mean for Hong Kong's elections? Well, we don't know the exact plans, because this was only a resolution and the full legal text is yet to be published, but we do know a few things. There are basically three big changes that we know for sure. Firstly, the election committee will be expanded from 1,200 to 1,500 members. The election committee is responsible for choosing Hong Kong's chief executive and is divided into sectors of 300 members. Three of the sectors represent industries in Hong Kong, while the fourth sector represents a combination of Chinese and Hong Kong legislatures, including LegCo members, and 117 members elected by district councillors. This new fifth sector is apparently going to be made up of members of the NPC and CPPCC which will almost definitely be very pro-Beijing. And there are also reports that the district council representatives will be replaced by pro-Beijing members. Ultimately then, it seems that the committee who chooses Hong Kong's chief executive is being taken over by Beijing. Secondly, the number of LegCo seats is set to be expanded from 70 to 90. We don't yet know what sort of seats these will be, whether they'll be geographical constituencies or functional constituencies. But we do know that at least some of them will be elected by the election committee, which, for the reasons we just outlined, can be expected to be pretty pro-Beijing. Our best guess is that all 20 of these new seats will be appointed by the new election committee, essentially giving Beijing 20 more seats in LegCo. The third change is that potential LegCo candidates will be vetted to make sure that they're sufficiently patriotic. In practice, this probably means that China will be able to disqualify any pro-democracy candidates that they don't like, simply by claiming that they're not patriotic enough. All of these changes can be implemented via amendments to Annexes 1 and 2 of the Basic Law, which means that the legislature in Hong Kong won't get to vote on it. Predictably, Western countries have expressed their outrage. The European Union put out a statement saying that such reform would run counter to the previous electoral systems in Hong Kong and renege on commitments. The day before the resolution, the US Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, warned that the US would take action against egregious violations of democracy and human rights in Hong Kong. Once it passed, the US State Department spokesman Ned Price called it a direct attack on Hong Kong's autonomy, Hong Kong's freedoms and democratic processes. What does all of this mean though? Well, it obviously means that there's basically zero chance of pro-democracy parties winning a majority at the next election. Perhaps more importantly though, it shows that China's playing hardball. Pro-democracy parties were unlikely to win a majority in the first place, but China, well, they cracked down on them anyway, which could be a sign of what to expect from China in the future. What do you think of this whole situation? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to be notified when we release more videos like this one in the future. Special thanks to our Patreon backers who make videos like this one possible, and if you want to see your name at the end of videos, then you too can back us on Patreon. The link to that's in the description.